Hi, my name is Dr. David Patton. I'm from the University of Derby, and I'm presenting a paper on the um, role of uh, emotions in desisting out of crime. So I'm specifically looking at um, hopes and also the pains of desistance. And what I found from looking at the diaries of 43 um, prisoners who've been convicted of very violent offences is that hope is quite central to their journey. So they've recreated a new sense of self and also they've envisioned a new future life that they would like to live. But also in their diaries what's been revealed is the pains of their um, journey. So they anticipate that in order to desist successfully they've adopted this strategy of isolation. So they're thinking that they will need to avoid certain places or certain people and some are considering moving geographical locations altogether. There are also lots of concerns around um, the pains of rejection um, and exclusion from both family members and people in the local community as a result of the crimes they've committed and there's clearly a lot of kind of relational disharmony um, which will obviously mean that a lot of the social networks and social capital that they could ordinarily access won't be occurring. Also they anticipate that um, in terms of gaining employment that their criminal conviction is going to be another obstacle. But for some people within um, the sample they acknowledge those pains but actually they seem to be um, articulating a greater sense of agency or self-belief um, around the social structures or around that particular pain or barrier. So they're saying that they have transformed into this new sense of self and that they intend to see those barriers or those pains as goals to overcome. So it's clear in the research that for some people there, there's a dynamic and interactive relationship between the subjective perception of the pain or the structural impediment um, and also uh, how that structure is l perceived to likely uh, occur in their futures. So um, exploring that and wanting to harness their voices because I believe that the most significant level of change needs to occur on the relational level of desistance or the social level of desistance, so how the other um, perceives their changed status or their changed identity as a result of desisting from crime. And unless we see those changes, and I think unless we harness the collective voices of those desisting um, in terms of how, what Maruna has called a social movement of desisters, a bit like the civil rights movement, that those um, population groups will actually both paint a picture for the future society that we want to live in, but also they will take us there. As I've been a criminologist for 20 plus years, and it, it seems like you know the reformation of the um, removing the criminal, uh, the disclosure of the criminal conviction, for example, has been bounded about now for decades. And I think that it's going to be actually be through convict criminology and through the voices of those with a lived experience of desistance, if they collectivise their voices, that that will make the change and create a new society in which inclusivity and acceptance and reconciliation and transformation can actually flourish. Great.